This computer fan was sent to me by two Danish YouTubers called My Playhouse and Brainiac75. And they did a collaboration video together where they got some servers and they ran a magnet across them to see if they could affect the hard disks inside. And they did. They uh, damaged several of the hard disks, but more importantly, on one of the servers of four cooling fans, they actually damaged three of the four cooling fans. Now, this might seem quite a lot for a magnet, but when you consider it was the largest neodymium iron boron magnet they could find, uh, then it's not much of a surprise. Now, the reason for this packer here uh, was so they could actually slide the magnet down, bring it closer in a controlled manner, because if that magnet made contact with the computer case, the, the server case, it would probably be very, very difficult to get back off. I also have to mention that uh, neodymium iron boron magnets of this size are just incredibly dangerous. It's the most powerful commercially available magnetic material, and there already have been quite significant injuries involving this material with metal objects flying through the air with great force, like knives and screwdrivers, to mate with the high magnetic field and causing injury. But the most dramatic injury was involving two, and if you've got two of these big magnets anywhere in the same building, then you have to actually plan. If you're going to move one of the magnets, you have to plan the route you're going to take to avoid the other magnet or make sure the other magnet is restrained. It takes a lot of planning because if you don't do that and the other magnet gets attracted to the magnet you're holding, then the force at which the magnets hit each other will be so considerable that it will smash all your bones uh, if they get in between and you'll also get shrapnel injuries because the, the these magnets tend to shatter on impact. Um, there have been instances, uh, one particularly horrible incident, where a kid, uh, its dad had two of these big magnets, and the kid was playing with one without its dad being there, and went too close to the other, and it had its hand crushed between two magnets. And if you consider, how do they even get them apart? I think it resulted in amputation, because... Two of these magnets together would just not part. Um, and also it raised complications of, you know, what would you do with an ambulance? You couldn't go near an ambulance because then you'd get the magnets stuck to the metal door of the ambulance. It, it must have been a horrible scenario. And this is why Brainiac 75 is wearing these, these magnet defence gloves. No, they're not actually going to do anything other than the fact it takes quite a lot of pressure to lift the magnet up and that's why he's got those on more for comfort than anything else. But anyway... The damage. So this is one of the fans, and I have tested it. I looked up the data sheet, because this has four connections. It's got plus 12 volts, negative uh, the zero volts. It's got the signal back to show it is spinning, the feedback, and it's also got a pulse of modulation input control. And the pulse of modulation input control, I believe if it's left floating, the fan will just run at full speed. But if you uh, control it with the logic signal, it will let you control the speed. Um, and just to be on the safe side, just to make sure I test it properly, I, I gave it a supply of 12 volts, and it draws a consistent 50 milliamps-ish, but doesn't make any attempt to turn at all. But um, I also took the pulse of modulation input and just tied it to the positive connection via resistor and the negative. Yeah, it, I just couldn't get this to go at all. So to start off with, uh, I've already taken the label off the back, because that's uh, how these are easily... Well, how... The, the way these fans are assembled, uh, the fan is inserted and then a little tiny circlip is put in the back, quite footy to get out, so just to save time, I already removed that, and now I shall try and remove the blade. Now, the blade of the fan itself is the rotor of the motor, it's the bit that rotates, and... It's uh, not got any windings on it at all. It's just purely a magnet. And I've checked this with another magnet. And as you move the magnet around, you can feel it repulse at two sections of that and attract at two sections. So it's got, uh, basically, it's a two-pole magnet in the sense that it's got two norths and two souths. So I suppose four-pole magnet, really, in a sense. And normally with these fans, the, as the magnet rotates, the, the magnetic fields are sensed by a little sensor on the circuit board. Now, this is I'm going to take this out so we can take a closer look at it, but this is where I've learnt the hard way in the past, that if you uh, try and just put your hand in and grab the uh, stator here, which is, this, uh, uh, this is called the stator because it stays stationary, but it's actually got the windings on it, it's a, an active stator. And I found that if you just grab it and try and twist out using unreasonable force, it cuts you quite badly. So I'm not going to actually try that with this one. I've done that in the past with other fans while trying to take them to bits. So let's uh, just 
use unreasonable force and chop this right out. Proper fan disassembly techniques. And then perhaps peel this circuit board material back. Uh, not circuit board material, the uh, try and cut the casing off. This may not come off. The core is kind of, I think it's glued in. I'm not really sure. Um, what I can see here, there's a dedicated drive chip for the fan. And this here looks like it is probably a Hall Effect sensor to detect the magnetic fields rotating to actually tell the fan when to actually... The, the processor here, the little chip, it to tell it when to actually pulse each sort of winding to actually provide the rotation. Now, the application of the really strong magnetic field, I'm wondering if that just completely defeated the ability of that to sense and basically had the thing, instead of pulsing the coils and turn, it basically tried to jam them all on. It might have confused it in some way or it might... I don't think it would have induced, I don't think the magnet was passed across fast enough that it would have induced too high a voltage in the windings because it'd have to be quite a fast movement to do that. But um, I reckon that maybe it's uh, damaged this sensor um, and that's not something that can be changed. However, the unit is still drawing approximately 50 milliamps. So I'm going to power this up now. Actually, I'm going to cut the rest of the plastic out if I can get this off. And then I'm going to power it up and I'm going to see what's actually getting warmed, see if there's any clues as to what might have failed. So I'll be back in a moment. So that's it now, completely taken to bits. And it's using that a dedicated chip that's designed for fans. And it's got the things like it's got the Hall Effect sensor feedback down here. And it's designed to drive an external H-bridge driver with a single winding uh, motor. However, this uh, particular fan isn't using that. It's using a different arrangement. And it's using uh, a plus, which is it's quite odd. A component, uh, there's a component in line with the plus, uh, the positive side of the coil, that has been completely exploded. But we'll take a look at that afterwards. But it's actually got a, basically a centre tapped winding. And each side of that winding is coming down to a MOSFET. I'm not sure if this is just to save cost of MOSFETs or just maybe they get better control this way. But either way, uh, this goes down to the negative rail. And interestingly, there's a, what it says, ZD, I'm guessing that means Zener diode. And it's got, got it across the um, MOSFETs. And what's really interesting is that these Zener diodes were a complete dead short circuit and they've caused uh, quite a lot of current to flow through those windings, which has probably been the main reason that the component uh, that was in series of the positive side popped. So it's a different arrangement from the standard schematic, uh, the standard sort of data sheet schematic. It is this sort of standard tap winding arrangement. So if I now look at the circuit board itself, here is the... Let's just adjust this brightness up a little bit. That's better. Here's the side with the control chip on it. Um, and it's also got its Hall Effect sensor there. The Hall Effect sensor has just marked the letter G. And it's designed to uh, detect the field of this passing as this rotates. This, will, this magnet with its different fields will pass over that. So it can basically get feedback and determine the position of the rotor and when to trigger the uh, coils and it can also determine the speed and things like that and provide feedback to the, the main computer that uh, the fan's in. Um, on the other side is the dual MOSFET package that was pulling the windings down. Now, this is the, the positive side goes through, uh, the positive comes in, goes through this diode, uh, and then goes to this control chip that has been completely exploded. I haven't a clue what it was. Um, it says TR2, transistor 2, I'm not really sure. Um, but uh, it's it may even be a current reg. It may be a current sensing arrangement because uh, there are a couple of resistors here in parallel. But yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, this component, which has exploded, is uh, feeding this pin here, which uh, on this motor assembly has the two windings going. There's one winding going between there and there, and one wind going between there and there. And here's the Zener diodes. And initially when I tested this, it looked as though this component, this MOSFET, dual MOSFET package had gone dead short circuit, but it turns out it survived. And it's the Zeners that had failed dead short circuit. And 
what on earth would have done that? The only thing I can think of is a sudden burst of high voltage spikes or or perhaps a, a really unusually high voltage that caused just immense current flow through those. Um, I'm not sure what the rating is because right at the moment it's zero ohms uh, and they're completely not intact anymore because I snapped them while I was actually trying to get them off the circuit board to clear that uh, area of the fault. So, um, yeah, something has happened that uh, has caused a, an immense current flow through these. Uh, even when this, basically, even if this transistor was off the current, has it's almost as if there's been a high voltage transient that's caused that current flow. So I wonder if it's a, I wonder if something got upset that caused much more than 12 volts to uh, come into this unit. I'm not sure those have been rated at. Um, or if it's just a, a, some, it's caused a series of high current spikes that has caused those to fail. It's the least components that I expected to fail. I thought it was going to be something like the MOSFET package. Um, or whatever this thing is. So, um, not overly conclusive what's happened there. Um, it does possibly look as though it's seen some sort of really immensely over-voltage situation that it's not been able to handle, and a lot of current has effectively flowed through the windings and then through uh, these uh, zeners. Um, so, very odd, very strange, but uh, interesting nonetheless.